何So this is the Hornby Double O Gauge LB and a CR A1 class Terrier. And here it is next to a Lego clone minifigure. And it's even shorter than that. So just imagine how small this is. It is narrow as well as short. On the side, I think it looks pretty reasonably detailed. But I don't know what to expect since I never owned a Double O Gauge train before. You can see there's like some text over there. Although it is kind of hard to get on camera since it is so small. I feel like I need a micro lens or something. In the back, uh, we have the coal bunker filled with coal and some nice air brake pipe detailing. Now one thing that impressed me a lot was like how good the coal actually looks like how it sparkles in the light. I really do like that effect and that's actually one of the reasons why I chose Hornby over Dapple because they actually have coal pre-installed. On the side we have some Westinghouse air pump, uh, some steps for the cab and the cab itself actually has a lot of detail I think. All these pieces are really tiny and small but you can see they're in there and there's also this clear plastic block that goes on the inside of each of these windows. Now one of the reasons why I got this Terrier is because it's quite similar to Stepney the Bluebell engine but it is a little bit different since Stepney is an A1X while this one is an A1 so there's more of a flared base to the smoke box which I'm not particularly a fan of but I have gotten used to it. Here's what it looks like on the bottom you can see the Hornby logo and a single gear down there. And in the front of the cab, there are some tiny little holes because I think they share the same mold as other Terriers. Now, double gauge trains tend to have this unique coupling system. So there's basically this loose hook that connects to other couplings and a giant hoop. It's not exactly the most realistic looking, but anyways, here's the rest of the roof. So when I first put it on the tracks, it wasn't moving at all until I moved it later down the line. It started to crawl a little bit and then a little bit more, but it was definitely not normal. So I got rid of that switch and I just made it a straight piece of track, no curve at all. And it would run, but it would sound weird as well. So I changed to a different set of track. Maybe the tracks before, they were defective somehow. There's something in the mechanism. It run a little bit better, uh, but then it would still go off into these dead areas. And that's when I noticed there's like this little black gunk on top of the rails and maybe that's what's causing it. So I cleaned it off with a piece of tissue, just trying to scrub it off. And when I took a look at it, it was like a dark green. So maybe it's like some sort of rust that developed on the tracks. And then it started working better actually. So I decided to clean all of the track using a damp paper towel. And then it started to work like a charm. <laughs> So when I unboxed this, the coupling was actually loose in the box, so I had to reattach it myself. But at least you can see on how this mechanism works. You just put that inside. It kind of looks like a Lego hand connecting to it piece. But you just pop that in and it is pretty much fine. And this is the Bachman Ventilated Van. It is the British Rail Departmental Rail Stores. And here's what it looks like. On the side, you can see there is some nice detailing with some writing there. Some chains for the doorway, the British Rail logo, and uh, some other printing. I really do like the blue stripe that goes across. And here on the side, you can see the brake detailing, as well as the bottom. And on the end, there are these tiny little boxes in the corner, as well as the giant vent. 
And it's pretty much the same thing on the other end. As for the sides, they're the exact same thing. The only thing I saw different was this tiny little white dot at the bottom. As for the roof, it is pretty smooth. And this is the Bachman Cumberland five plank wagon and it's supposed to be weathered so there's like a bit of weathering going on but it's factory applied so it doesn't exactly look the most realistic since you know the light gray area is actually really clean looking. Here's what it looks like on the ends and unlike the other car they're actually different color planks per side. And as for the other side, this is actually different as well. This side says Erlan, while the other one just says come. And for the inside of the wagon, there's actually a curved interior on one end and a boxier one on the other. I had no idea that was going to be a thing. And here's what it looks like underneath. So it also came with this coal load, which I was quite confused on how to exactly load it since the foam was kind of getting in the way, so I started peeling it. But that turned out to be really wrong, so I decided, you know what, I'm just going to really try to squeeze it in there and it actually just fit in pretty fine. So as for the coal load, it looks pretty realistic, I think. I really like how the texture looks like. And it's probably the most impressive thing about this. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the Terrier and my BNSF-9. Just to give you guys a feel on how different uh, HO and OO is. And I'm not even sure, maybe this is even small for OO, but I don't know, it's my first locomotive. NANI?! So the way I connected the OO to the HO is that I just put the hook inside the knuckle of the box car and it actually worked. <laughs> So it managed to pull the train all the way around this curve until the very end and then it got stuck. So I took off one boxcar.
The good thing about these OO trains is that they're really easy to put on the track. You don't need a reroll or anything. You just plop it down. It takes a couple seconds. Especially with the wagons since they only have two axles. And the couplings, they are really easy to use so that they connect right away. It's not that hard. So for my overall thoughts, I think the Hornby Tear was actually pretty nice. Also, you know, the Bachman wagons. And I got them all at the model center, although the shipping was quite expensive since it's coming all the way from the UK. I kind of laughed when I saw the package because it looked beat up and looked like it's been on quite a journey. When I first picked up Merton out of the packaging, I noticed, you know, the yellow, it wasn't as vibrant as I thought it would be, but maybe that's just how it is in real life. It also is incredibly small, so it took some time getting used to the scale of it. I also do like how the Terrier makes the sort of steam sound effect like chuk chuk chuk, when it's working really hard. As for the coupling system, although it's not the most realistic thing since it's like a giant hoop and hook, but it is quite functional and easy to pair up trains together. I also got a wake up call on how dirty the tracks are. I didn't realize there was that much dirt or like rust. I don't even know what it is, but since the terrier is that sensitive to the track, it made me realize the problem. I also was quite surprised on how easy it is to couple some HO scale freight cars to my OO train since I have never seen that before. But yeah, that's pretty much it for my experience running my first OO gauge trains. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, remember hit that like button down below, subscribe if you had already, and I will leave you here with some bloopers.